funny thing, language. Strange thing, learning a language. You know, there are comparisons to be made between languages. They have comparable structures and families they belong to and all the rest of it. But to learn a language really is to, it's to learn a whole mentality, isn't it? It's to learn kind of a whole take on the world. And then to translate. Wow. Sometimes it's only God can do that really well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. You're very welcome to the Brendan Option, coming to you courtesy of Immaculata Productions. I'm Father Brendan Kilcoyne. If you like our work, would you fire us a few shekels via Patreon or PayPal? Uh, by all means, please hit the subscribe button, please, because it's our lifeblood, that subscribe button. Uh, say a prayer for us, and make maybe a constructive comment in the comment box. I believe at La Salette, our lady spoke to the kids. Well, the, you know, the lady they met, the lady they met, dressed in local costume, spoke to the kids in the, in the, local, acts, in the local dialect. In Nock, she said nothing, which is interesting. And I would put it to you that for all our reputation of being silver-tongued and voluble, the Irish are, in Walter Mackin's immortal phrase, a silent people. Now, he used that phrase of the Irish peasantry during the famine. And a professor I had regarded it as the most perfect description of the Irish 19th century peasantry that anyone had ever made. In a phrase, the silent people. They said, as near to nothing has made no difference. They were born, they grew up, they died. Silent. I think the silence of the vision at Knock is linguistic and communicational. I think there is a grammar of silence. Because even human silences can be communicative. I think at knock, in a time of great difficulty, and great poverty, with the memory of the great famine still fresh in the people's minds, and other famines that were occurring, had occurred and were occurring since. Minor famines. I think Our Lady spoke to those people in a language that was all their own. She didn't speak in Irish. She didn't speak in English. She didn't speak in Hiberno-English. She didn't speak in a dialect. She spoke in silence. It is an extremely layered phenomenon, the, the vision at knock. Emphasis on vision, because vision it was, with no locution whatever alleged by anybody. Now, it's often been asserted that the people at knock who saw the vision, some of whom were very young, that they'd made it up and, of course, that they were influenced. They were influenced artistically by stained glass windows they'd seen. They were influenced by holy cards they'd seen. They were influenced uh, by Lourdes. Um, on the very day of the vision, as far as I know, uh, the solemn dedication of the Basilica at La Salette was happening. So they were influenced, influenced. If they were so influenced, how come they didn't reproduce what seemed to be part of the canon of such experiences. There would be locutions and prophecies. Nothing. How did they make that up by themselves? Yeah, that was pretty good going, you must admit, for completely uneducated people. I'm, I'm not aware that any of them had much education. A completely 
silent vision. I think there's only other one other on record. Completely silent. A kind of iconostasis. A living iconostasis. And not a word. Not a syllable. Not a condemnation of the parish priest with whom some were fighting. Not in support of the parish priest. Because many were sympathetic to him. He was struggling at the time with the fairly dark secret societies that often emerge in tremendous poverty and, and, and uh, uh, ill-treatment of a rural population, very like the Mafia in Sicily. Nothing. No political statement. Nothing. What use was it to anyone? in terms of worldly projects or, 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 or goals or aims. She said nothing. And in saying nothing, she was the embodiment of the dumb peasantry who earned the contempt of every revolutionary movement. The Fenians opposed land reform because they were afraid that the peasantry, once they got a hold of a bit of land, wouldn't have any more interest in political radicalism. Probably right, too. She was silent, like them. And so was the whole vision. St. Joseph, as they rec recognised, as they claimed he was, nothing. St. John, as they thought he was, nothing. The lamb on the altar didn't raise a bleat. Nothing. The angels didn't even sing a few bars or dance a step. Nothing. I mean, consider the, the, the whole tenor of 19th century pious pamphlets and prints. Wouldn't you have the angels singing a heavenly choir? Nada. Or as they say in Irish, tada. Nothing. Silence. A contemplative silence. I would argue to you that that is the true message of Nock is contained in that silence. It is a call back to contemplation. It is a call back to contemplation. It is a call back to, to, to the Eucharist. It is a call back to the Mass. It is intensely Eucharistic, intensely contemplative. It's a call to adoration. I would argue to you that that's what Nock is about. I can't prove it to you, but I would argue it to you. Irish people do like conversation. And we do like music. The image of the Irish pub traditionally of being raucous and full of music is a load of nonsense. I remember a friend of mine who's now dead who ran a pub in Dublin back in the 50s. He said, if you were singing in your pub, you got the name of being a rough house and wouldn't attract, as he put it, the better class of client. A pub was for good pints and civilised conversation. A low murmur of conversation. See, the Irish are a bit more nuanced, shall we say, but then probably every people are, than their stereotype might suggest. I think she got us bang on. Contrary to the stereotype, contrary to what people expect of us, I think she had our number. And that vision at knocking, it, it calls back to... Ireland's glorious monastic past. It calls back to the Irish ascetics, the monks, the hermits, the anchorites, to those imitating the desert fathers. It calls back to the great reformers, the Kaili Jade, the vassals of God. It calls back to, to, to a whole rich seam that is continuous through Irish Catholicism. And it is silent. It is engaged in presence and adoration and communion. 
take another look at Knock. Now, it, it offers the full range. You can buy elegant plastic bottles of holy water. You can get sticks of Knock Rock. You can get all the things that you can get at any of the great shrines. The gaudier, the more tasteless, uh, the more authentic. You can, you can have all of that. The shrine itself has been so, uh, superbly developed by the, by the present parish priest, Father Gibbons. He's put a huge amount of work into it. I, 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 I would suggest that you go there, but I would suggest that you go there with, at the core of your visit, the visit to the wall and the chance to spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament at the apparition wall, simply adoring. Knock is a call to communion and adoration. That's knock. And so I offer you, as a slightly vulgar but not ineffective tool at starting to dissect this thing that is the vision at knock, the silence of the Lamb. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.